Akashi's Business Builders is proudly brought to you by our partner Jabra, who are helping small businesses grow. Coming up on Koshi's Business Builders, a recipe for success, Manu Fidel's startup journey. How to combat the cash flow crisis, plus growth strategies to help you scale. G'day and welcome to a special episode of Koshi's Business Builders, where we'll be taking a deeper look at the issues facing small business owners in 2023. From managing the cash flow crunch to getting access to finance and how to plan for growth. We'll be chatting with inspiring business owners, leaders and experts to deliver the best advice to help you succeed in these challenging times. But we're doing a deep dive. You've asked us to do it and we're gonna do it, warts and all. And joining me today as co-host, my very great mate, Manu Fidel, as celebrity chef and judge on My Kitchen Rules. Manu, he's so well known, he only needs one name, is probably one of the most recognisable faces in Australia. But did you know he's also a small business owner and entrepreneur? Manu has been a small business owner for decades, so he knows all about the highs and lows of running a business. From serving the rich and famous in his hatted restaurants to facing the heartbreak of closing a much loved venue. Manu's learned firsthand the tough lessons of the hospitality sector. And those successes and failures have given him some hard earned wisdom. Manu, Thank you for joining us. Good to see you, mate. Thank you for having me. What a great introduction. <laughs> what, what a journey you have had. When you look back, is there one bit of advice you would have loved when you first started? Well, business-wise, I suppose, you know, we always know that uh, a great business plan is a necessity. Yeah. But I think uh, an exit plan is even more necessary to be able to exit when you're in trouble. You need to know that and a lot of people like me, we've got the, uh, the passion, the idea, we, it's going to work. But when it doesn't, are you ready to exit? How do you do that? Wow. What's been the toughest exit you've had to go through? I think uh, you mentioned restaurants. I think uh, Le Grand Cirque in, in, in Melbourne. We were open for only a few months. We had two famous chefs running the place, so we thought we are going to be doing so well without even thinking about failure. And we fell big time and hard. And when you look back, why? What was the reason? I think we were not prepared, I suppose. We were just counting on us more than on the business. We don't look at the business as a whole. We just thought we were just too good to, you know, to, to do whatever we wanted. That's the honest truth. But you've got back into it. Your latest venture, La Botanique. Yes. Is, it's a fascinating twist on a restaurant. It's a kitchen that you hire out for TV shows. It's a function space. And when I look at it, I think, hey, you've built almost a multi-purpose hospitality venue. Was, was that the intention? Yes, I wanted to keep a foot in, in the food industry, the hospitality, but I also didn't want to be running a restaurant. So I thought, what can I, we had bought this property, this commercial property years before we started dealing with it. But it was more about uh, using it for everything that I've done in my life, which was food, but uh, TV and, and still photography and all of that. So on the, all of those little business under one roof. So I'm not running a restaurant there, but we do events, which mean I'm outsourcing the food or the crew or the, the staff and the customer space for it. So I don't actually employ anyone. And I think it's the best business plan. I've got my wife who's, who uh, organizes all the bookings and that's where it stops. So I think it's a mature uh, decision that I've made, I suppose, after so many failures. You and your wife, how do you balance a relationship in a business as well? Lots of small business owners have their partners involved. <laughs> it's a tricky area. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I suppose we found a way of splitting the workload, which means I do one side of the business and she does the other. The thing that I've always begged Clarissa not to do is talk business at home. Yep. We talk business at work, but when we're home, home is home. 
have those boundaries. It's great advice. Uh, more advice from Manu coming up after the break. The cash flow crunch and rising costs. How Aussie businesses are feeling in 2023. Plus, a fix for a major problem we all have with our work video calls. Welcome back to Koshy's Business Builders. Now, a recent survey by the New South Wales Small Business Commissioner has revealed that the cost of doing business is the number one concern of small business owners for the 12th month in a row. And with wages, electricity and gas prices all on the rise, no wonder 78% are tossing and turning from the worry. Plus, if that's not enough to keep you awake at night, seven out of 10 business owners say they're concerned about their cash flow and 64% say they're worried about working capital. It's a bit of a grim picture. Manu, the cash flow crunch is affecting everyone. Um, how do you manage your cash flow challenges? Uh, it's, there's, there's no great answers to this. You know, it's very difficult. It doesn't matter what, you, what type of business you, you run. You just got to shrink the expenses. Uh, it's hard to do because the rent goes up, the food goes up. The staff goes up. All those costs are going up and up and up. Uh, and you just got to streamline as much as you can. That's that's the only solution. And it's putting your invoices out on time, having clear terms and following them up, isn't it, when people owe you money because everyone wants to use us as their bank at the moment. That's right. It, and, and But that, that is chasing people is tiring, but you have to make it happen because otherwise you get in trouble. Yep. How have you adjusted to these economic times? Hospitality, doing it tough at the moment. I mean, through COVID, it's, it was the most horrible time, I suppose. And it's not getting easier, but I, I had to let people go. Uh, the people who stayed with me, they had to cut their wage. Uh, it, it was a horrible time, uh, but, you know, I think I will, I'm lucky to have a, a great team behind me who still believe in me and still believe in the brand and, and we're still working hard. But talking back to La Botanique, it, it's a great business plan, it's a great concept because I'm basically having a great space that can offer multiple ways of using it, employing only one person. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the key, I suppose. And when you run a, a restaurant, it's hard because you need service. Uh, you need people behind the stove cooking. Uh, and to, to reduce that, it's possible, but then the quality goes away. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a very hard thing to juggle. Yep. Um, who do you look to for advice? Have you managed to build a, a team of oh, business advisors, confidants that you we, go to? We uh, started uh, with a, an amazing gentleman a couple of years ago. Uh, John Beach, who's got a great little business, who used to be a CEO himself, and decided to let go all of that and become an advisor. And we started with him a couple of years ago, and we have a meeting every month. And that helps me because I, I'm still learning the business world. Yep. You know, I've, I was not educated that way, but I, I'm really uh, hungry to learn more and more. And he's there, just, you know, if I've got, I've got a shoulder to cry on. I think it's a very good thing to do if you can have this person helping you to make the difficult decisions because you know when you're in the business yep. it's it, it's cloudy you, you don't know what to do so you need someone and it's actually, lonely yeah and it's lonely <laughs> and you say you don't sleep at night so when you've got someone that's looking over the business that out of it he gives, he's giving you the solutions right you know and then you choose which one you go with building a great team around you that's really important more advice from Manu shortly, but stay tuned as we hear how to make your work video calls less painful wherever you're taking them. Dropouts, dogs barking, children playing in the background, we've all been there. Hi, I'm Mike from Jabra. I'm here to give you three tips to make your work video calls even better. From our research, we found that 58% of people who make video calls for work are not using a headset that's fit for purpose. So here's my tips. Number one, look for certification. If you're using Microsoft Teams, Zoom, or Google Meet, you'll need an audio product that is certified. Unfortunately, your day-to-day -day consumer earbuds probably won't even come close to that criteria. 
so certified devices are best. Number two, make sure your audio products meet your daily needs. A product that's lightweight, comfortable, has all day battery life, and of course, noise cancellation. Take a look at Jabra's latest Evolve 2 or Speak 2 product range. Number three, go beyond the average webcam. Looking good on screen is just as important as being heard, so you'll need a webcam that's 4K, tracks your face with AI technology, and is portable when you're on the go. I recommend Jabra's Panacast 20. Don't forget, you can claim audio and video tech as part of your instant asset write-off this tax time. For more information, head to the website on screen. Coming up, Manu returns to the hot seat to share more small business success secrets. Welcome back to Koshi's Business Builders. Now, let's dive back in to get the nitty gritty on what it takes to get a new business off the ground. Manu, tell us about my Manu. And, and why did you come up with it? Oh, I was just, was I bored? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I just, um, it, it's the same as La Botanics, like leaving the restaurant industry, but still wanted to have a foot in the food industry. And uh, being on MKI, you know, the, the, yeah. the sentence came out, where's the sauce, where's the sauce, where's the sauce? <laughs> I love I've, your sauce. Thank you. <laughs> but I went back to the office one day. I said, you know, let's do our own. And I did some some uh, bit of research, and there was nothing on the shelves that was quality, uh, fresh, and was made with real ingredients. So I decided to dive into that. And <laughs> it's probably the most difficult <laughs> business I've entered, but the most satisfying at the same time. Wow. I'm loving it. Okay, uh, let's go at both ends of the scale. Why was it so difficult? What surprised you? Because I knew nothing about retail. Absolutely zilch. Right. And, uh, you know, I, even though when we were signed by uh, one of the biggest super, supermarket chain, uh, I thought, job done. I know th that's where the job started. So it took me five years to get on the shelf. Yep. And we've been on the shelf for three years and the job is nonstop. And, but it's, I don't know, it's just satisfying. It's just, you know, waking up every day to, to get to the next step. What do we need to, to do to sell more and yep. more and, and so on. You bootstrapped it yourself to start with as well, didn't you? Yes. Was it your, your face, your name, your cash. That, that was a big leap of faith. Yeah, I think it's just about passion. I think whatever business you do, it can't just be something that oh, you just thought of. You've got to have, and I know the word passion has been used, overused sometimes, but you need to have that, 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 that strength, that belief that what you're going to do is going to work and it's going to make changes. Yep, yep. How did you break into the supermarkets? Now, it's every, every small business or small manufacturer's dream to be on a supermarket shelf? I think I just had one up on everybody else's. <laughs> Your brand? My brand. I've already had a brand. I, you know, people knew who I was. Um, you know, I've, I've been on, the, like you've been on TV for some times now and I've, you know, I've got a big following. So that was a big help. But like everybody else, I just knocked on the door. And instead of having a, a computer presentation on the white background wall, I went knocking on the door with my sauce and some meat and I cooked for people. Because the only way you can sell a food product is to put it in people's mouth. Yeah. And if people say yum, you got them in and, and it's, it's that way. How important is it building relationships, good old fashioned relationships? It's number one, that's never gonna get old. You know, you have to meet people, you have to shake hands, you have to communicate, you've got to make friends, you, because everybody knows someone that can help you. Yep. How did you fulfil the supermarket orders? Because it's great to get on the shelf, and then the sheer volume they talk about means the logistics to get it there are enormous. It's... It's a nightmare, it's a puzzle, it's, uh, <laughs> it's crazy how difficult it can be. We started with Woolies and I think they had a big faith in, in me and a big faith on the product. And we started the first six months we signed, uh, we had 300 shops. Six months later they gave us 700 shops. And by a year we, had, we were national, we had a thousand shops. And it's, I think we three years in now, we started working with Coles uh, and 
It's about marketing, but it's about people knowing your brand. And making sure the quality of the product matches your brand. It goes with this, uh, without saying, I would never put my name or my face on the pack if I didn't know that yep. what's in it is top quality. Coming up, we're gonna talk to Manu about his advice on scaling his business after the break. Welcome back to Koshi's Business Builders. Earlier in the show, we were talking to Manu about the challenges of launching a product at scale. Now, I'd love to hear more about his strategies for growth in the business. Manu, you've gone from three sources to eight sources. Mm. Um, you can't bootstrap any longer. Um, you've actually gone to the market for investors as well. Yes, um, so the eight sources were always there, but then, you know, You've got to start somewhere. So three SKUs are the supermarket and you just want to grow that. And we also decided to go to the food service. So we now got a bigger pack for restaurants because since COVID, we lost so much qualified chefs that I was, I was wanted to help uh, the restaurants to, right. to have a good product uh, with that the people making it. So not only retail, you go wholesale That's to right. the trade now. Yes. Which... And what's, it, what's the balance? of the business then? Is it sort of 50-50? No, I think retail's doing a lot more, right. you know, because we started retail much earlier. Much earlier. Yep. So the business is healthy, it's making money, which is great, but that market money that we make needs to be reinvested into the business. Uh, marketing is, as I said, is number one. So you kind of always chasing your tail. So where we're at now, personally, I could be happy just ticking along. But when you play with the supermarket chains, they expecting a lot more. Right. So you need to follow they, them because if they're not happy with you, they flick you out. So how have you been able to scale? You've gone through Equitize, haven't yes, you? Yes, still playing with Equitize at the moment. We're not quite there. So we're hoping to get, you know, um, a good amount of, of uh, injection of money, I suppose, to being able to scale. Uh, and scaling is not about um, making more. It's about uh, surrounding you yourself by a bigger team. We need sales reps. We need sales reps to go around the pubs and say, listen, we've got this great product. Just awareness, I suppose. We need marketing. Marketing is, doesn't matter if you sell drinks, food, or chairs or whatever. Uh, there's so much competition out there. If, if you don't put money into marketing, you may never get there. So I think we've realized in the last few years that marketing is actually a number one thing we need to concentrate on. Right, so it, it really is going the, the source side of it, not just from one employee like you have in La Botanique, but to actually build the human capital around That's you right. to take it to the next level. That's right. Okay. So any expansion overseas, do you think? We're happy with Australia. New Zealand is the next step. I think we've, you know, uh, my kitchen has been playing over 40 countries in the world, so hopefully that would be great. But uh, New Zealand is next and, you know, I'm take, happy to take over the world. <laughs> what drives you? Why do you keep doing this? Like, Koshi, I can't go back to the kitchen. I can't just, you know, sharpen my knives and go back to run a restaurant anymore. This is not me. I'm, I'm a different me. Yeah. And I've, I've just got the bug. I think the business bug, which is, I think having few failures in the restaurant world, I keep searching for... Um, to succeed, I suppose. Yeah. And I think with the Buy My Brand, I think I'm not far from doing that. And when I say success, it's not about dollars. Yeah. Success is about having a, a brand that's going to be there for a while. How do you balance that work, life, mental health? I, I think it's it's difficult and it's it's been difficult for, for years. I think I'm just getting to um, understand how doing, to do it now. And I think it's about um, feeling comf comfortable. Yeah. And, and when you fail so many times in business, it's hard to feel comfortable and feel good about yourself. Yeah. But I think we have just turned the page now where I, I can feel that I'm, I'm more business oriented, I've got more knowledge, I feel more confident, and all of this kind of gives you a bit more, you know, less right. weight on your shoulders. Right. Um, and that's why I want to build a, a bigger team because I want to be able to look at the business, like I was saying to you, from outside versus being inside all the time. Yep. 
And the balance is just make sure that you've got great quality time with your family, uh, great quality time at work, and look after yourself. You are, as a business owner, the number one asset in the business, and you've got to look after yourself. That's right, right. indeed, Very indeed. Cool. Mate, it's so good to pick your brains. Thank you for joining us today. As I said, it is all about doing a deep dive with some incredible business owners. And you can find out more about Manu's by Manu range of sources at manu.co and go to Equitize and take a look at how you can invest. And remember, if you're looking for small business tips or the latest news and expert advice, of course, you can find it online at koshisbusinessbuilders.com.au 24-7 or follow Koshy's Biz on Facebook, LinkedIn, Insta and Twitter. We'll see you next time. Next week on Koshy's Business Builders, how to start a successful new business with Startup Daily editor Simon Thompson joining me as co-host. Top tips for attracting an investor, plus why female founders are getting the short end of the stick when it comes to funding and how you can fix it.